And when I look at what has happened in the Middle East over the last few years, the fact that we went to war in Iraq based on faulty, inaccurate intelligence data in 2003, we're not talking 1903 or 1803, we're talking 2003. I just finished reading a book. It's called What Happened? What Happened? You know who wrote the book? It's written by President Bush's former press secretary, Scott McClellan. And what's he telling us in that book? This is very serious. This is the most serious thing that goes on in government. The question of whether you go to war. And Scott McClellan is telling us in that book that we were misled. That we were misled. That the intelligence data was cherry picked. It was wrong. And I'll tell you something. I am passionate about this. When our elected officials fail us on these key issues, as citizens in this great democracy, we have a duty to hold them to account. If we do not hold them to account, we will get more of this incompetence. More incompetence around foreign policy, more incompetence around energy policy, more incompetence around fiscal policy. And when I looked at the record of my opponent in this election, what did I see? And why did I get motivated to change my life to do what I'm doing? I did so because I went back and I looked at his record. And what does the record show? It shows that he voted with President Bush 95% of the time between 2001 and 2005. When all of these big decisions were made, Senator Pat Roberts was one of George Bush's most loyal allies. He voted for all of this reckless fiscal policy that added $3 trillion to our national debt. As chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, he had the duty, the responsibility, to get the intelligence data right. That was not done. They failed us there. And there has to be accountability. On energy policy, what do I see? I, in addition to him accepting $300,000 from the big oil companies, I also see that he voted year after year against improving the fuel efficiency of our vehicles until this election year. I also see that he votes for the bridge to nowhere in Alaska. And I want to tell you something. I've been paying a lot of taxes. And I take it personal when my tax dollars are being wasted for a $200 million bridge to an island where 50 people live in Alaska. And then I see that $20,000 flowed from Senator Ted Stevens into Senator Pat Roberts' accounts, campaign accounts. That's the kind of stuff that has motivated me to run for the United States Senate. And I'm going to tell the people of Kansas the truth about this record to the best of my ability. And in 1948, the year I was born, President Truman was running for president. And I had a tape, and I have a tape, of his speeches. And you know something? He was up at the Iowa State Fair in 1948. And he was telling the farmers before him out there at that fair why they should vote for him for president in 1948. And he laid out where farm prices were, land prices were in 1932, and where they were in 1948. And he concluded by saying to them, he said, if you don't vote for the Democrats this year, he said, you're the most ungrateful people in the history of humanity. That's pretty true. Okay. But in the audience, in the audience, it was so fun because you could hear people out there hollering at him and saying, give them hell, Harry. <laughs> and President Truman stopped and he said, I'm not giving them hell. I'm telling them the truth. And they think it's hell. Well, there's going to be a little bit of that this year. I am going to be telling people the real truth as best I can in this election. And I'll tell you something. We have a great country. We are capable of great achievements in this country. But we desperately need new leadership. Leadership that will tell us the truth. That will help us lead this country in a new direction. And the key to this, the key to this, frankly, and I tell people this, there are not Republican answers to these problems. There are not Democrat answers to these problems. There is an American solution to many of these problems. 
and that that solution is not in the right ditch or the left ditch. It's right in the middle of the road, and we have to build these coalitions from the center out, bipartisan uh, ways, to solve the problems that we're facing. Our country's future depends on it. And I'm running for the United States Senate because I care about the future of this country. This election is about the next generation. It is about the next generation. And for the baby boomers out there, we just have a limited amount of time to right this mess. Our time is running out. I figure that I will only serve in the United States Senate one term because the decisions that have to be made are so hard and so tough. And if I do what is needed for this country, I probably couldn't get elected dog catcher <laughs> again. But I, I really do believe that we have to have the kind of leadership that's going to take a long-term view of these difficult problems. Let me just close with a quick story uh, that I think makes some of these points. I had the opportunity uh, to serve in the Congress with both President uh, Reagan when he was president and President, I mean, uh, Speaker Tip O'Neill. And some of you probably remember Speaker Tip O'Neill, quite, quite a character. An Irish Catholic, they were always asking me, how did an Irish Catholic Democrat get elected in Kansas? But <laughs> that was sort of an ongoing topic of conversation. But Tip O'Neill and <coughs> President Reagan would sharply disagree on the issues of the day, but they would come together at the end of the day, set aside their sort of partisan differences, and deal with each other civilly. And that's what we have to restore in Washington. We have got to have a vigorous debate about the issues facing this country, but we have to do it with civility. And President Reagan, you know, was shot and he was lying near death in a Washington hospital. And Nancy Reagan would only let a few politicians come in to see President Reagan, and one of them was Speaker Tip O'Neill. In spite of their deep political differences, Tip O'Neill would go in, kneel down beside President Reagan's bed as he was lying near death, hold his hand and pray for him. That's the spirit that we need to recapture in Washington. A spirit that puts patriotism and love of this great country ahead of cheap partisan battles, okay? That's what we have to do. And we have to focus on the truth. We have to focus on addressing these problems that I've just talked about. Energy, weaning ourselves from this terrible dependence on foreign oil. And I'll tell you something, I'm gonna support everything reasonable to get this done. Improve the fuel efficiency of our vehicles, yes. Solar, yes. Wind in Kansas, yes. I'd support these production tax credits right away. Drilling, yes, okay. Not in Anwar, but drilling in this country, okay. Yeah. And, and, we have a 200 year supply of coal in this country, and we can learn how to use that coal in an environmentally safe and clean way, and we should never give up on that either. And I strongly vote for that. do everything we can to incentivize the immediate production in mass of electric vehicles in this country, electric hybrid vehicles, and I want to see them American made and not Japanese made or Chinese made or anything else. They need to be made right here. Right here. I would like to see us incentivize the purchase of these vehicles. So working people in this country and low-income people can park their gas guzzlers and start driving more fuel-efficient cars. And if we would take just a fraction of that $700 billion that we're spending to buy oil and spend some of it here in the United States to reduce consumption of oil for our low-income people that are suffering so much with these astronomical prices of gasoline, it would make a lot of sense as far as I'm concerned. And then on health care, I want to just touch on that and then I'll get off the stage here. But, but health care is another area where I am very concerned about the price of drugs and many other things. But just one area that we can address, I believe, and that is we need to give Medicare the authority to buy drugs in volume at discount prices from the pharmaceutical industry. There's a law that we have to Roberts and I sharply disagree. He has repeatedly voted against that bipartisan legislation. I will vote for it the instant I arrive in the United States Senate. Let me just conclude by saying that this is a battle that is very important. It is not an easy battle. I'm out there working 18 hours a day, and so is my family, and so is everybody that I can motivate to help me in whatever way they can. I know 